What's up guys? I think you would agree if I said that nowadays the camera is one of the most important elements of a smartphone, unless you are buying a device for your grandma to make calls. It's universally accepted that budget-friendly phones rarely come with uh, good cameras. But today I'll try to disprove that. This video will be about the top 10 affordable phones with decent cameras in 2022. Watch this video till then and perhaps you won't need to buy an ultra expensive smartphone to take awesome Instagram selfies or breathtaking landscape shots. Let's go! I want to start with Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro. This smartphone was released in March of 2021 and it fits the criteria of a budget-friendly device. This is an Android 11 smartphone with a Snapdragon 732G processor. It has a 6 or 8 gigabytes RAM and an internal memory of 64 or 128 gigabytes respectively, as well as a 50-20 mAh battery. But the most interesting thing about this device is its camera. There are several lenses uh, that include a 108 megapixel wide-angle lens, an 8 megapixel ultra-wide lens, a 5 megapixel macro lens and a 2 megapixel depth micro lens. In other words, uh, the device has all tools for an average photographer. You can both blur the background and capture as many details as you want. While this smartphone can take great shots, it positively struggles with uh, 4K videos. But here is another upside. Editing your images on an AMOLED screen is pure joy. You might see me as way too old school, but I prefer editing my images on a big screen of my PC. Let me know in the comments if that is the case with you too. And when it comes to editing photos on PC, I always choose Photoworks. This is an intuitive editor that will help you effortlessly perfect your images. It will only take you 10 minutes to feel at home with this software. Besides, Photoworks offers batch processing. I can go on for hours describing all the awesome tools this photo editor has, but I'd rather offer you to try try it yourself. Just follow the link in the description and start your free trial. If you like the program, you can order it at a huge discount. So go ahead and try for the works. And I meanwhile will go back to camera phones. Realme 9 Pro Plus is a nice smartphone that is similar to the previous entry. It was released in February of 2022. It runs on Android 12, has 6 or 8 gigs RAM options, whereas the internal internal memory comes in 128 or 256 gigabytes. When it comes to a phone's internal memory, I'd advise you to go with as many gigabytes as you can. I have an old iPhone 8, I choose to save a few bucks when I bought it, so I opted for a smaller internal memory. And now when I shoot 4K videos, I barely have enough memory. Switching to 1080p won't do any good, as the video quality will decline. But if shooting videos isn't on your agenda, then don't worry about the internal memory. 128 gigs will be enough. So what does Realme 9 Pro Plus have to offer in terms of cameras? There is the main 50 megapixel lens, an 8 megapixel wide angle lens and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The phone has a frontal camera of uh, 16 megapixels, but it is nothing special since all the frontal cameras in 2022 are more or less the same. It is fine for FaceTiming, but you won't be recording videos with it, right? This smartphone takes amazing nighttime pictures. Its 50 megapixel sensor is somewhat large uh, when emptied into the phone's body, but it will give you quite detailed photos. Here is another device that is somewhat similar to the previous two, but that looks a bit too bleak if you ask me. It's called OnePlus Nord 2. It runs on Android 11, can have 6, 8 or even 12 gigs RAM, the internal memory varies from 128 to 256 gigs and the device has a 4500 mAh battery. The main lens has a 50 megapixel sensor, there is also an 8 megapixel ultra wide option, the third lens has a 2 
megapixel sensor and is used for blurring the background. Although the device is rather budget friendly, its camera certainly matches uh, those in more expensive models. Now without any forward, meet Google Pixel 5a and other pixels as well. You all probably know that Google's phones are praised for their cameras. These cameras are equipped with a state-of-the-art neural network that analyzes the shot and artificially fix it in post-production. Now that is science fiction. Even the older Pixel 2 or 3 provides impressive shots, the 5a model is no exception. It has a 12.2 megapixel main sensor and a 16 megapixel wide lens. That all promises excellent quality. Granted, the previous options have a higher megapixel rate, but Google takes the lead in something else. These smartphones have amazing photo editing algorithms. YouTube is overflowing with in-depth uh, reviews, so sneak a peek to see for yourself. Let's move on. Moto G200 has an amazing value for money ratio. This device was released in November 2021. Just like Google Pixel, it has its own photo editing algorithms, which is cool. The smartphone runs on the Snapdragon 888 Plus processor, has 8GB of RAM and 128 or 256 of internal memory. There are three lenses plus a frontal camera. Once again, the number of pixels in the sensor don't matter as long as AI is at play. Another important advantage of this model is the ability to take good nighttime or low light images. Some might consider a 6.8 inch form factor a bit excessive, but it is a matter of taste. If you have a limited budget but you still want to take awesome pictures, this smartphone is a worthy purchase. Coming up next is Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G. It has that same Android 11, 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and 64, 128 or 256 gigabytes of internal memory. It has that same Android 11 and 46, 128 or 256 gigs of internal memory. The main camera has a 64 megapixel sensor. There are also an 8 megapixel wide angle lens and a 5 megapixel macro lens. By the way, the camera has a remarkable macro mode. The main camera is also fine with its details. All in all, this smartphone excels at taking pictures, but there are some downsides to it. The main one is its battery life. After all, the device has a 6.5 inch screen and the Snapdragon 780G RAM processor, which are both effective battery killers. But at least uh, the device looks fine, as its design uh, resembles uh, that of Google Pixel. We've already had a OnePlus phone on our list, but one more is worthy of your attention. It is Nord CE2 5G. Unlike Nord 2, this device has a 64 megapixel sensor, but overall these models are pretty much similar. With one notable exception, Nord CE2 5G is cheaper. It offers either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal memory. Running on Android 11 and on uh, Dimensity 900, the device is an efficient one for its price. I've gotta say, OnePlus knows how to make good camera phones. I know a photographer who prefers working with OnePlus as opposed uh, to working with iPhone. So consider this smartphone if you are looking for a good value for money ratio. Next up is Honor 50. Honor's manufacturer really strives to put good cameras into its phones. This model has a 108 megapixel sensor along with an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The frontal camera has a 32 megapixel sensor and it provides outstanding quality. People who love to post selfies on Instagram will love it. Hardware wise, uh, this device is similar to all the rest. It offers 6, 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. The internal memory comes in two options, 128 or 256 gigabytes. There is the Snapdragon 778 5G RAM processor. One of the downsides is the absence of the headphone jack, which is kind of Apple-like. So if you don't have wireless headphones or just don't like them, make a note of this. But aside from that, this is a nice smartphone. Finally, we have an Apple product on your list. Sure, you might oppose me by 
saying that an iPhone is not a budget-friendly option. But iPhone SE 20 might be the most affordable iPhone among those that were released after 2020. And let us not pay that much attention uh, to the manufacturer. We all know about iPhone's clear supremacy. Even Instagram is optimized for them. Besides, when you buy an iPhone, you can be sure you will get 5 years of updates. That makes us all loyal customers. So what about the tech specs? iPhone SE has a 12 megapixel main lens and a 7 megapixel frontal camera. That's it. There is no portrait mode, no nighttime mode, but regular pictures are still good. Who is iPhone SE 20 good for? I'd say for those who want to ditch Android-based phones and try an Apple phone for a change. But if you already have an iPhone, so why on earth are you watching this video? I'll wrap my video up with a Samsung Galaxy A52 5G to be exact. To be honest, the A52 series is a staple Galaxy model. It has the Snapdragon 750 processor, 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 gigs of internal memory, a 4500 mAh battery and a 6.5 inch screen. Granted, A52's camera is no match uh, for the S series, but at least the former is more affordable. There is the 64 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel wide lens and a 5 megapixel macro lens. Just like Google Pixel, Samsung has an image processing AI, so the pictures looks really good. Sure, they don't look like pictures taken with a pro camera, but if you are not a photographer, Samsung will do just fine. Yep, there are a lot of smartphones on the list, but there are so many more options to talk about. But this top 10 is really comprised of those models that truly deserve your attention. So please show your appreciation for our work by liking this video. Did you like any of the smartphones we've mentioned? Have you tried any of them? Let us know in the comments. That's it for today, hope to see you soon.